Cult of the Lamb is the newest roguelike indie game to join the flock of Game of the Year contenders. As a vessel for the old one who waits, it is your job to create a self-sufficient cult that will destroy the old ones and thrive in a new world. Is this game the second coming, or does it deserve to be put to slaughter? My name is Pizzell56x, also known as Pez for three dads and a console, and this is my review of Cult of the Lamb. <laughs> If you looked up Cult of the Lamb on Wikipedia, you'd see it described as a roguelike action-adventure game. And while that's true, Cult of the Lamb has so many systems that work flawlessly with one another that the game's categorical description seems so far off base from what this game actually is. That's a weird paragraph, so I'm going to break this down into two parts, and we're immediately getting into the gameplay part of the review. Cult of the Lamb can be broken down into two major sections, a roguelike, dungeon crawling, bullet hell, and also a village building, slice of life simulator that reeks of the cuteness pulled straight from Animal Crossing and Harvest Moon. I'm going to start with the, and when I say this, please know that it is not a slight on this game, the more boring part of this game, the roguelike part. Again, the roguelike dungeon crawling in this game is very good, but it's your standard fare if you've played games like Hades. Binding of Isaac in Rogue Legacy, or the bullet hell nature of a game like Enter the Gungeon. In this regard, it is a very competent competitor to these games, but the more interesting part of the game is the next system I want to talk about. The second aspect is the Village Simulator Manager, where you indoctrinate followers to your cult in the name of the one who waits, the chained up deity that saved you. You are the de facto leader of this cult, and you have to manage them when it comes to their worship, their work, and their livelihood. Your goal is to acquire as many followers as possible, mostly found in your crusades, and put them to work. The options vary from chopping wood, to mining stone, to refining materials, to going out on missionary work to collect more materials and or followers. This includes praying at your shrine in the middle of your compound. Their worship around the shrine creates divine inspiration, which is used to unlock more options in your compound. In the beginning, you'll build a temple for your herd with the ability to conduct daily sermons and perform rituals that will either raise or lower the faith of your cult. Managing this faith meter is incredibly important because if your faith meter decreases, it is possible for your cult members to dissent against you and try to turn others against you. You are able to rectify their heresy with imprisonment and re-education. Both of these systems work flawlessly together to give you an incredibly deep and competent game that will have you returning and yearning for more time with it. Personally, I find the Crusades to be a bit of a chore because the game does such an incredible job with the cult building aspect that I just want to spend all of my time in my commune. Cult of the Lamb is a great looking game. Bada bing, bada boom. Honestly, I think that's the end of this section. But let's dig into it a little bit more. Looking through the graphical settings, your standard options are there. When streaming Cult of the Lamb, I normally run it on medium settings. And when I'm not streaming it, I can easily run it at ultra. Both ways, offline and online, I'm easily hitting my target frame rate of 60 frames per second. And 99% of the time, I'm at a steady 144 frames. This game is not a heavy graphical lift for most cards, and I don't see people having a hard time running it on medium settings. Massive Monster also did a good job with how they used color to represent the world. Your deity and your cult will feature lots of blacks and reds to invoke the paganist and, dare I say, Satanist cult-like appearance one would think about. Depending on which old one you wish to destroy, their area has a curtain color scheme that is present throughout your entire run. The visuals in this game are wonderful. From the chibi style look of your followers when they level up to the wild visuals of sermons and rituals, you're in for one of the better looking games released in 2022. And major credit to composer Nariana Johnson for putting together such a varied yet incredible soundtrack. I have always talked at length about audio being as important, if not more important to a game than its visuals. Good sound can elevate a good game to a great game. And this is one of those times that the audio does that. Once you get a taste of the starter cult song, you'll never get it out of your head. So 
Sword and dagger slashing sounds crisp. Hammer bashes are boomy and bassy. Hits on heretics are thwumpy. When you land a critical attack, the sound is just so satisfying. Lastly, let's talk Twitch integration. Streaming Toolsmith, makers of Twitch extensions for such games as Baldur's Gate 3 and Disco Elysium, has created a very good and engaging Twitch extension for Cult of the Lamb. Through the extension, Twitch reviews can do three things. One, use their channel points to contribute to the cult's totem, which will give the streamer rewards. Two, choose to help or hinder the streamer during random times of the stream. Three, enter a free follower raffle and, if chosen, create their own cult follower. The extension has had some bumps, as I don't believe streaming Toolsmith expected the game to be as popular as it is on Twitch. With that said, when the extension is working correctly, it is an incredibly fun and engaging way to keep Twitch viewers invested in your playthrough. It is just another tool in the Cult of the Lambs toolbox to push it above some of the other games in the same category. And lastly, let's talk recommendation. Unlike other reviews, we don't score games at three dads on a console. If every game is a nine or 10, then no games are a nine or 10. Instead, we look at games through the lens of a parent who may have limited gaming time. We ask two questions. One, is this game worth your time? And two, is this a game you can play in front of your child without feeling any embarrassment? So let's answer the first one. Is this game worth your time? I would say yes. As of this writing, I've put 13 hours in a Cult of the Lamb with most of that being on my Twitch channel. I very much enjoy the cult aspect of this game and I see no real end in sight when it comes to the game finishing. Right now, I don't know what the end game looks like, but I can see myself putting in 25 to 30 hours before reaching the final boss. Second question seems to be a lot harder to answer, but I don't think playing this in front of your kid should be an issue. While there are some real adult themes here, including sacrificing your followers, ascending them into another plane of existence or resurrecting the dead, is done in such a cute fashion that it shouldn't scare your children. Ultimately, the question you have to ask yourself is, are you okay with these themes and your child seeing them? For me, I wouldn't have any issue with my child watching this, and there are viewers of mine that have watched my streams with their kids and their kids are enjoying it very much. If these actions were more realistic, I tell you to shy away from this. But due to the art style, I don't think they're scary. If you haven't been able to guess, I highly recommend Cult of the Lamb. Currently, Cult of the Lamb is my 2022 game of the year, which honestly shouldn't surprise anyone who's been following Three Dads for a while. This game is right up my alley for the price tag of $25 on Steam, Nintendo Switch, PlayStation, or Xbox. You'll easily get your money's worth. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel for more parent gamer focused content and watch the podcast live every Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern time right here on YouTube.